Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, hey, we just entered into a wonderful month, this month of April, and God has said He's showcasing His love through you. And that's why He gave us the command, go bear fruit. Praise God. And like I told you yesterday, all you need to do is to say, yes, sir. Praise God. And can we begin that already by making demand for our daily bread? Now, God is saying, go bear fruit. And then he says, there is a part he needs to do, and that's give you your daily bread. So what does that tell you? This, this from this month, the daily bread is going to be so big. <laughs> God. Yeah, because he's displaying his love to you. Accept his love. So as we make this demand, make it with full faith in your heart and know that God is just going to showcase his love in your life. Join me right now in faith and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming from you to me and I receive it right now. Amen. Jesus name amen praise God receive a miracle today God will honor his word in your life and God is showcasing that he truly loves you and the kind of testimonies you will receive are testimonies that will show the love of God in your life praise God God bless you now turn your Bibles with me to first peter first peter we began to talk about the wisdom of god's word in the last week of march and we are not done yet it's a long one and we're going to be looking at several things so but first and foremost we began to lay the foundation last week and showing you how it all begins in you you know receiving and understanding the wisdom of god's word in your life so second first peter chapter 2 from verse 1 he said wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and envy and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the sincere or the pure milk of the word of god that you may grow if so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now you see, understanding the word of God, understanding the wisdom of God's word. Now why do we call it the wisdom of God's word and not just the wisdom of God? Now we are referring to the word of God as the scriptures in this, in this case, okay? And number two, we are referring to the wisdom of God as the way God speaks. You know, I told you last week, understand this truth that because because many people still make that mistake and and um, get into error sometimes um taking time to reason will help god doesn't stop you from thinking using your brain he loves it when you use your brain because that's when you retain god in your mind see you've got to retain god in your mind if you don't retain god in your mind then terrible things are going to happen in your life if you don't retain the word of God in your mind. Now, it, the word of God is in your spirit because you, your spirit and the spirit of God, they are one. It takes nothing for, the, for your spirit to produce or receive the word of God because it's there. But the problem is to move that word from your spirit to your mind. Your mind is your operational system. Your mind is what you walk with. Your mind is your subconsciousness. Your mind is what you, you, you use in processing things. It's like the CPU of your life, the processing unit of your life, your mind. So when, 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 when um, Solomon says, guard your heart, and actually David said that because it's in um, Proverbs chapter 4, he says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. It was David's instruction to his son Solomon guard your heart so if you can guard your heart very well now that's what uh, peter is telling us now get rid of all those negative things it's in your power get rid of them then receive the pure word 
of God. Because most times, if you don't clear your heart, if you don't clear your all this negative stuff, your interpretation of God's word becomes wrong. Now you are going to be sieving the wrong things into you. I'll give you an example. If God comes to you now and says, my son, this month I am bringing judgment in your life. There is one person who will begin to say, hey, God, hey, hey, all the bad things I've done. God, please forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Oh, God, please forgive me. Forgive me. Why? Because you, you see the word judgment as a destructive word. You see the word judgment as, as um, a, a punishment. You know, I'm coming. All you are hearing, I'm coming to punish you. So, so all you can think of God is showing up now. Every bad thing I've done, hey, you bring it to book. Now, because that's what you have saved into your heart. All God said is, I'm bringing judgment in your life. Another person who is schooled in the personality of God knows that, hmm, Lord, that means everything that is owed me is going to be paid to me this month or this season as you're bringing judgment in my life. See? Now, What's the difference? The same word, different interpretation. So one person is crying, another person is happy. Two things. One person viewed that statement from a heart that is not right with God. The other person viewed the same statement from a heart that is right with God. So one responded in fear, another person responded in joy. See? Same statement, but what brought the difference is the state. See, all the, all the things that have clouded your processing units, all the things that have clouded your mind. So Peter says, get rid of all these things. Are you seeing the wisdom now? Get rid of all these things, then receive the pure word of God so that you will grow with it. If your mind is destructive, if all the garbage in your mind are destructive thoughts, that's exactly how you're going to be interpreting. And now there, are, there are preachers who've gone ahead to, to not just personally now, they have taken it to form a ministry. They have taken it to, to gather God's children and they are teaching God's children things from that standpoint. You see? And that's wrong. Because you see, Jesus made a very powerful statement. He says, look, anyone who breaks the least of this commandment and teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. I can tell you a lot about that. Why? Because he broke it. He didn't just stay at breaking it. He began to teach men that this is the right thing to do. This is the right way to live. Are you saying this now? Misrepresenting the character of God. Now this, is happened, this has happened to a lot of people privately, but the most dangerous ones are when, when people in their crisis begin to use the, the eyes of their crisis to teach God's people. You're setting up yourself for great danger and destruction. Jesus said your qualification in the kingdom will be least. You'll be the least people in the kingdom. Praise God. So, so clearing your heart. There are, there are interpretations of scriptures that are many have seen and gotten it wrong, you say out of context or whatever it is. But you see, you've got to really take charge of your life for yourself. And you're intelligent. God created you intelligent. There is no one that lacks intelligence. 
it may be on different skills, but everybody have intelligence. How do you know? At least everybody knows how to run away from, from, from destructive things. You at least see someone who sees fire and walks right into it. Like mm, 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 mm. when you feel the heat, even if your eyes are closed, when you feel the heat, you know something is wrong and quickly move away. That's some sign of intelligence. Now, all you need to do is to push this into several other areas in your life. It's the same thing with your mind. A lot of God's children don't study their Bibles by themselves. They bank on things that have been told them about the Bible. They bank on things that have been told them about scriptures, about stories in the Bible. They bank on things preachers have preached and then they quote it as though they read it themselves. But what you don't realize is if the preacher is wrong, then it means everybody that believes him where that thing is concerned will be wrong. So why don't you develop this attitude of studying even your Bible by yourself? Now, Taking the pain to study is doing yourself great good. Because you see, you'll come to find out something. The more you, you study and understand the scriptures, you'll come to understand something that the scriptures does not have a problem. It is men, wicked men or ignorant men that have created messages that are wrong using scriptures as their backing. You know, like they say, you can get anything from the scriptures or from the Bible to push whatever narrative that you want to push. If you want to tell how, uh, uh, if you want to tell how terrible God is, your message is the terribleness of God. You find enough scriptures to back that up. If you want to tell how how righteous and wonderful God is, you have enough scriptures to back that up. But then the question then is, what is the true light in which you see the scriptures? It has to do with your own heart. Remember, Peter said something. That's why we're taking Peter's, this first Peter 2, um, 1 to 3 as our main text. Peter said something. If so be in verse 3, that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Beyond anybody's testimony, beyond what you have heard about God, what is your own testimony about God? Have you, have you met God? Now, when I'm saying, I mean, have you met God? I'm not saying go and pray, God reveal. No, no, no. Have you, have you experienced God? Have you seen things happen in your life and you know this is no fluke? You know this is a, a direct act of God or manifestation of God in your life. Have you had those experiences? Peter says, if you have tested and known that the Lord is gracious, now use that because you remember uh, Habakkuk actually said, the just shall live by his own faith, not the faith of another person. See? You will live by your own faith. So in developing your faith, what have you discovered first about God? Do you think God is wicked? Do you think God is gracious? Do you think God is a, what they call that thing now, a, a one who drives his slave hard? A slave driver, something like that. Do you think that's how God is? Do you think he's the one that nourishes us and gives us all things? Now, even from creation, a lot of people have had misconceptions about God. And having those misconceptions have polluted their minds. And I was talking to my wife recently and we're just discussing this and i said we're, we're analyzing how the early apostles died and now i know that 
There are lots of books. There are lots of messages that uses that, those stories, and think they want to inspire you to dedicate yourself more or to be, um, should I say, fearless. But then, I was talking to my wife. I said, something doesn't tally. Now, we, we've greatly accepted this as, as an okay truth. But I was like, something is not right. And what were my thoughts? Jesus, the ministry of Jesus was to give life. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. There is another one who came, Jesus spoke about. The thief came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Killing, stealing, and destroy, destruction. We are aware the thief has already come and he's doing these things. But then Jesus said, the reason I came is to give life and have the life in abundance. So we look at the early apostles who were proclaiming Jesus. And we look at their end. Their end seemed to look like destruction, killing. So did they end with Jesus or they ended with the thief? You get what I'm saying? Now, we, we hardly want to ponder on these things because like, no, 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 don't even go there. You don't, you don't know why. You don't know. No, see, that's what I was telling earlier. You've got brains. You've got brains. So if you've got brains, it's important you ask questions. So we began to look at it in, in a new light. Like, okay, wait. Is it just possible that by passion, these people stepped out of their boundaries of instruction Jesus gave and went into something else? Is it just possible? Did they maintain the gospel that was given to them till the very end? Or did they overstep? Did they go into things? Now you will look at, eh, how would you know? Don't you know that Jesus even said that they shall be persecuted? No, you see, read, every, read in details everything that Jesus spoke about. Now these are all the things we're going to be talking about. Trust me. And I pray by the Spirit of God that your mind will not be rigid and, and not to accept God's truth or rather the wisdom of God. So, is it just possible that beyond the message beyond the assignment that Jesus gave to them. They went into something else that they shouldn't have gotten into and then they got trapped in the midst of those things. Because you read about the, the same disciples when they started work, when they started the work that Jesus gave to them and they were preaching to the people, bringing salvation to the people. And the, the Jewish elders didn't like what they were doing. Of course, you know, they had a problem in, in their hands. They were trying to close this story that Jesus is the Christ. They were trying to close up the story. And here comes this man that were preaching Jesus that he is alive. They paid some soldiers to tell the story that Jesus is dead and the disciples came to steal him from the grave so that's why his body is not in the grave yet these men were preaching so you can already see where their where their disagreement comes from so they will arrest them lock them up but guess what they will be freed from prison by the angels of god and commanded to go and preach the word of this life peter was locked in prison by King Herod, an angel came to rescue him. Paul and Silas were locked in prison. The, the, the Holy Ghost came down and, and all the chains were loose and they were freed from prison. Now you see these things happen. Then what happened at their later end? What happened to them? What happened that they actually arrested? Paul was in prison for so long. 
and, and eventually got killed. What happened? Thank you, Jesus. You know, my time is up. This is no way I would have loved to stop, but we're going to continue from here tomorrow. I pray the Spirit of God gives you the kind of understanding that you will need. So you are standing in God will be right. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.